Well, you kind of had like a bit of a cancelization for a little while, right? Like, I don't for know. For sure. Yeah. Like a lot of hard years. <laughs> like, I feel like my, uh, well, okay. Well, specifically canceling in, in the sort of comedy world. Yeah, it was 2018 uh, when I first started going on Compound Media after my mom died. And then I, I did an impression of this like woke comic girl. And she basically mobilized a whole community uh of comics to come after me i guess because that she had convinced them that that i was encouraging people to like go go after her and it was like it was really just an insane misunderstanding and um i've talked about this on like other other podcasts but basically like she, you know when we were chatting she was like you don't understand chrissy like people are saying this one guy said I should be raped with a railroad spike. And I was like, Kate, where would someone even get a railroad spike in 2018? <laughs> and I think, cause I didn't appropriately uh, empathize with her, with her victimhood. Mm -hmm. She didn't like that. And she kind of like turned me into an enemy. And then, uh, but th this is all in hindsight. So after that railroad spike conversation, I went back on compound on in hot water wrapped up in like this, tinfoil costume being like i'm uh i'm spike i'm the anti-raping railroad spike like i don't want to be up in any <laughs> human keister i have a spike i have six little spikes at home that i care about very much and a rail like i'm not interested in any kind of interspecial so i was being this goofy personified railroad spike thing but since it was behind a paywall uh, Kate and all of her underlings, I guess, and the people that are trying to suck up to her to eventually, I don't know, get something from her, take screenshots. Someone takes screenshots. Oh, look, this is Chrissy being the rail the railroad spike. And that was turned into, look at Chrissy's being this raping railroad spike. Wow. Look how horrible she is. She's such a horrible person hmm. encouraging people to send her death threats. Meanwhile, she was uh. like not able to produce a single actual death threat. But this was coming off like the Me Too era. So she was fully taking advantage of that. And since she had better credits than me at the time, a lot of comedians kind of just like took to her side. Mm -hmm. And since I'm on compound media, like, oh, I'm already mm. perceived as sort of like alt right and uh, scary, I guess, which is funny because like not too long before then I was like hosting a show every month at the Stonewall Inn that a lot of these like liberal comics were like trying to get on. So it takes very little for the, the sort of like community perception to flip. And that's when I kind of realized like, oh, wow, okay, this is, it's all about how things look and um, like the virtue signaling and um, like doing the right thing, I guess, which I was never doing because I just wanted to explore my own sense of humor and be with the people that I thought were funny. And well, that, that is like, funny. Yeah. But that's funny because the response is like, oh, okay, she didn't think I was empathetic enough, so I'm just going to make a joke and go yeah. so far in the other direction, which still isn't good enough for her. Is she still a comedian? Does she still work this person? I think so. I think so. She's gained like 100 pounds since then. <laughs> well, that sounds still funny. Working. Yeah, maybe that's... she's not well. but um, Maybe not. Because she doesn't – I mean yeah. – I don't know her. I've never seen her. I have no idea. But I just that just doesn't sound funny, like a funny person. That sounds like someone who kind of wants to have a cause. Oh, yeah. And her her boyfriend died of a drug overdose. And then she totally made it about her. Oh, yeah. I think she even like wrote a book about it or partially. So it's like, OK, this is a person who's like taking advantage of of the things that are happening around them. Yeah, that's pretty gross. It's pretty. uh it's pretty lame. It's 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 very much like I I live in Austin, Texas now. I've lived in L.A. and New York. I've always been in like progressive cities, and I, I'm just now <laughs> gaining some skills on how to navigate these people and stop like stepping on my own dick. You know. Um, <laughs> wow, it's that big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't like to brag, <laughs> um, but it's just like <laughs> I've never heard just, anybody say that. Right? You never heard that expression? Step no. On your, step on your own dick? No. It's. I think it's a kind of just a put your foot in your mouth or just shoot yourself in the foot kind of thing. Um, but just meaning like 
they're they're out there and they are there's a lot of people that are just looking to get angry or looking to you know use you as some sort of lightning rod to make themselves look moral or just or something like that and uh, I think part of like living in these cities I guess as a comic it's a little different because you have like an act but for me it's like a little bit more like oh I just have to I don't know learn how to navigate and deal with these people in a more con- not constructive but like strategic way because they're out there and what they want to do is like use you to I don't know make yeah, some point that's what I learned like people will purposely misunderstand you if it furthers their cause mm-hmm. and you're like oh wow okay 